Hello, good evening, guys. Let's continue with a brand, brand new chapter where we are going to study about uh, group 14 in organic chemistry. So let's have a look at the content that we're going to learn for group 14. So in this chapter, we're going to look, have a look at the physical properties of group 14, uh, relative stability of the plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation states of group 14, and making use of that, we're going to study the tetrachloride oxides of group 14 elements. We also will have a look at uh, silicon, silicones, and also silicates. And last but not least, we are going to have a little look at tin and this alloy. So based on the past question analysis, you know that this group 14 has always been one of the hottest topics in STPM semester 2. So make sure that you understand this chapter very carefully. Okay, so let's have a look at the introductions of group 14. So the elements of group 14 are arguably the most important of all. So carbon provides the basis of life on the earth and silicon being vital for physical structure such as uh, rocks and stones, okay? So um, these elements um, of this group exhibit great diversity in their properties from the non-metals of carbon, metalloids of silicon and germanium to the metals of tin and also lead. Okay, in addition, so silicon form a diverse range of network solid. So many of the organic compounds of group 14 are commercially important. So let's have a look together at their physical properties. So here in the tables, you are see what you are seeing right now is the physical properties of group 14 elements. As mentioned just now, carbon is a non-metal, silicon is and germanium are metalloids, and tin and lead are metals. So as usual, when going down to groups, the metallic radius increase. As for the melting point, the melting point slightly varies a bit, uh, decreasing from carbon to germanium and further decreased from tin, but when it comes to lead, it suddenly increased a little bit. Now in terms of the structure, so it says that carbon, silicon, germanium, all of them have giant covalent network, whereas uh, tin and lead since that metal are hold by metallic bond. In terms of ionization energy, as you can see, generally they are decreasing, but when it reaches the lead, it suddenly increases a little bit. So there may be a reason why it's going on, so I'm going to explain that later. As for conductivity of electricity, we know that uh, carbon has two allotropes. So diamond is an insulator, while graphite is a conductor. Silicon and germanium, being a metalloid, is a semiconductor, while tin and lead is a conductor of electricity. So we're going to have a look at the detailed explanation one by one for all these physical properties. So as usual, uh, when we explain the atomic trend, we're going to say that atomic radius increase. So the key points is highlighted in red because when going down to the group, nuclear charge increase as the proton number increase. However, more electrons are filling in the shells, causing the screening effect to increase readily. So as a result, the effective nuclear charge decrease. So therefore, the atomic radius become larger. Okay. Now, as for the melting point of group 14, we found out that carbon, silicon, and germanium has giant covalent structure. So, the initial factors that influence all this starts from the atomic radius. So, we have to say that atomic radius increased from carbon, silicon, to germanium. So, as atomic radius increase, the bond length in between C, C, S, I, and G, E become longer, therefore weakening the covalent bond strength. So, as a result, lesser heat is required to break a weaker strength of the covalent bond in here. So, that is why the melting point decreased. So as for tin and lead, so both of them are held by strong metallic bond. So as you can see, lead has slightly higher melting point compared to tin because lead are more close back compared to tin. As for the next one, where we're going to study ionization energy. So as usual, ionization energy decreases when going down to group 14 element. So the, the way of how we explain is still the same. So this is due to the increasing atomic radius of group 14 as the nuclear charge increase. However, screening effect also increased at the same time, which decreased the effective nuclear charge gradually. So as a result, forces between the outermost electron and nucleus is weaker, therefore lower the ionization energy. However, if you look carefully at the ionization energy, lead has a slightly higher ionization energy compared to tin, despite the fact that atomic radius of lead is greater than tin. So this can be explained by their configurations where. So this is the configurations of the tin, and given showing to you in this diagram here is the valence electron for tin. So you have 5F, 5S, 4D, and 5P. As for lead, you have 6S, 4F, 5D, and 6P. So in here, you have a 4F inner shell. And this inner shell are greatly repulsing each other, causing it to have what we so call as ineffective screening. So as therefore, when we have ineffective screening, the screening effect decreases gradually and causes the effective nuclear charge to increase. So that is why the ionization energy of lead is higher than tin. 
Finally, for electrical conductivity, so generally we can say that conductivity of group 14 increased when going down to the group. So uh, we are going to use the band theory where we say that the gaps between the conduction band and valence band decreases with the increment of metallic properties. So carbon contains three types of allotrope, namely diamond, graphite and also fluorine. So among all these allotropy, only diamond is insulator while graphite, graphite and fluorines are conductor. So this one we can look from the angles of hybridization because diamond are bonded via sp3 hybrid. So there is no delocalized electron within diamond. However, for both graphite and fullerene, they are sp2 hybridized, so there will be an unhybridized orbital containing one electron. So this will delocalize among the spaces, especially where we see in between the uh, uh, this uh, uh, graphite structure. So this will allow the conductive activity to take place inside graphite. As for silicon and germanium, they are semiconductor where there is a small gap in between the conduction band and also valence bands. However, since silicon has a smaller density and is easily available, so that is why it is more preferable as a semiconductor compared to germanium. Generally, there are two ways of how you increase the conductivity. The first method is by increasing temperature. So it says that higher temperature allows more electrons from the valence band to excite over the conduction bands. So therefore, increase the conductivity of the semiconductor. Another method is by doping, where silicon is added to elements such as boron or phosphorus in order to produce more delocalized electrons in the valence bands, hence allow more electrons to excite to conduction band. Finally, as for tin and lead, since both of them are metals, so they can leak localized electron thus conducting electricity. So um, this conductivity slightly increased from tin to lead because uh, it's easier to delocalize electron for lead compared to tin. So uh, as the end for the physical properties introductions, let me share a few graphs for you that you can use to help yourself. So this is what we say is that when going down group 14, atomic radius increase, you can describe it as like this. You can describe it as nuclear, uh, nuclear charge increase, screening effect increase, therefore effective nuclear charge decrease. As a result, atomic radius increase. In terms of graph melting point against group 14 elements, so carbon silicon germaniums are hold by giant covalent structure. So it starts from the atomic size. So the atomic radius increase from carbon to silicon to germanium. Okay, so as a result, the CC bond length is greater, is shorter than SISI, than GEG. So as a result, the bond strength is weaker. As for tin and lead, they are held by metallic bond. So the, they are easily delocalized electron, therefore has low, uh, relatively high melting point. This is the graph of ionization energy about group 14, so generally decreasing. Why? Because atomic radius increase, same goes with nuclear charge increase. This uh, screening effect also increase as a result effective nuclear charge decrease as for that why is it slightly higher than tin so it is due to the ineffective screening of 4f orbitals so that is how you are going to do your short notes later when you're on your own and finally as for the con graphical conductivity so as going up the conductivity increase due to metallic property increase okay okay so make sure that you all use the graph in order to help you to do your revisions okay so therefore i end my first part of the group 14 elements so see you all later